Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I am a watercolor artist. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a tutorial on how to paint a cozy winter fireplace. Let's get started. For supplies today, you will need two cups of water, one for clean water, one for dirty, a napkin for drying your paintbrush. I am using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. For paintbrushes, I'm using a combination of Opus paintbrushes. I have Opus Allegro's number eight, four, and two, as well as an Opus Galliano flat brush that is a quarter inch. I am also using a Micron Pen 05. It's a black fine liner. If you guys use anything smaller than an 08, that would be perfect. And for paints, I'm using Art Philosophy & Co's watercolor paints, mostly from the Woodlands palette, but I have a couple paints from the Terrain palette. So I have drawn out a quick sketch of the fireplace that I'm going to do for this tutorial. I've linked a drawing template below, so if you wanna follow along with that, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, feel free to just follow along through the video as we go. The first thing that we're gonna do is paint our base of the fireplace. So I'm just gonna keep it really light to start, but it'll give us a good starting and reference point for everything else that we're gonna paint on top. So I'm making a super, super light brown. So what this is is brown, but it's really watered down. And we're just gonna start with painting the mantle that goes across the top. So with this mantle, while it's wet, I wanna work and just get some shading into there. So I'm gonna go now back in with a bit of a darker brown and I'm going mostly across the bottom just to add some more depth in there. So I'm gonna go, just move this out of the way for a second. I'm gonna go again and you'll notice that this time I've gone even darker with my paint. And I'm just going across the bottom there and letting it sort of bleed into the rest of what I've already painted. So now if I want, I can dry my paintbrush and just sort of smooth, smooth it out. Okay, so now for the bottom, I'm gonna start a similar way by painting across, but this time I'm gonna leave it really light and I'm gonna add some more of the detail once I've added the pen in later. Okay, and continuing to follow the same concept, we're gonna go around where the opening is in the fireplace. I'm just painting lines here. For this one, we are gonna go in and add a little bit of shading, a little bit more depth. So I'm going in with my darker brown and again, working pretty quickly while it's still wet. I'm just gonna add, add some shading to it and kind of let it bleed in. You don't need to be too intentional with this, just the idea is that we're adding more interest to the wood. We're gonna add some more details later. had it a little bit crooked, so I'm just gonna straighten it out with my paintbrush. Okay, so now that that's done, I sort of wanted to do a brick looking fireplace for this one, so I'm gonna go in with my redwood paint and mix it with a tiny bit of brown just to tone it down a bit, but we're gonna add sort of the effect of bricks. So I'm not painting each individual one, but very lightly, in behind, I'm going to paint rectangles of color and I'm kind of staggering them across my fireplace. So if you guys want for this portion, what you could do is use, use a paintbrush that has that edge already, um, but this can be done just using a rounded paintbrush. So I'm just gonna switch to one of my other paintbrushes right now. 
All right, so just to make this easier, I've switched my paintbrush and I'm gonna go in and continue to do the same thing, but because of the shape of the paintbrush, it's a little easier to paint the rectangles. And you'll notice that I'm just staggering them across my fireplace. I'm gonna add in some pen details later, which will just give everything more definition, but for now we'll just fill it in. So you sort of have a checkered look there. I don't want it to be too rigid looking. So I'm gonna go in now into some of the center spaces and I'm just gonna fill in with a little bit of color just to sort of soften those edges. So again, you can be, be really messy with this part. It doesn't need to be too particular. We're just gonna fill in those spaces. Okay, so we'll probably go back in and add some more detail there in a little bit, but I'm just gonna get the base laid out for all of the elements for this painting and then we'll continue to add detail as we go. So going back to using that same brown that we were using for the mantle, in my paint palette here, I'm using Bare and a mixture of redwood for the most part. So now I want to paint my little pile of wood in the corner here. So what I'm doing is I'm painting a mixture of little triangles that are kind of stacking just to look like they were cut. Again, this can be a messy pile, we'll add We'll add some more detail with pen in a little bit, just to give it, yeah, give it more of a stacked wood look. Um, okay, so now that that's done, the next thing that we're going to do is paint a simple wreath above our fireplace. So I'm gonna start with my light brown and just paint in a circle. And then I'm actually gonna switch to a smaller paintbrush. And for this one, we're gonna do just a very simple, very basic wreath. So I'm gonna go in with my green paint. So I'm using deep moss, but I've mixed a bit more of a yellowy green into it as well. And I, for this one, keeping it nice and simple, I'm just gonna work my way around I'm um, sorry, I'm gonna add some brown to tone it down a little bit. I keep changing my mind on what color I want, but this is a mixture of green and brown and a tiny bit of yellow. Just to get more of a muted green, the green that comes on this palette is nice, but it's a little too bright for what I like for my paintings. So just tone it down a bit. But for this wreath, we're gonna work our way around and we're just painting little leaves all the way around. So for the leaves around, what I'm doing is I'm putting the tip of my paintbrush down and I'm applying pressure as I pull back because I'm doing really mini leaves. It doesn't take too much paint or water to do this. Um, it's easier if you pick, pick a paintbrush that's kind of sized already for the leaves. So not too small, not too big. I'm using the Opus number two for this one, but it'll depend on the size of your painting. And we'll just finish off right there. All right, so there's my simple wreath. And now we're gonna add some garland to the mantle. So I have it drawn out here so that it's kind of going to be draping over the right side. So the opposite to where the wood is stacked. So starting with my same paintbrush, I'm just gonna paint a couple of really skinny lines to kind of be my guide to follow as I'm painting the leaves.
All right, so now I'm gonna go in and the idea with the leaves is gonna be very similar to my wreath where I just stagger them. I can make it more full in places because I have it so it's sort of a few strands coming down. And with this, because it is just a bunch of leaves, it's okay if you paint it sort of messy and overlapping. The idea is that it's just gonna look like a very full garland. So now at this point on the left side here, I want to do just a tiny little branch hanging down as well. So you could start from the bottom, you could work your way up, and I'm having the leaves pointing the opposite direction to the other one that I had, so they can kind of overlap in a little cluster in the corner here if you'd like. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna paint in is our fire. Um, so I'm just gonna grab some yellow paint. I have a yellow color in my Woodlands palette, except I've mixed it with a lot of green, unfortunately, and haven't cleaned it yet. So we're gonna steal from my Art Philosophy and Co. Terrain palette here. And I'm gonna get the sassafras yellow. I'm just gonna clean it up to make sure that there's no other colors on there. So for this one, I'm gonna start by painting the shape very loose inside my fireplace. And I'm gonna use a wet on wet technique. So I'm just gonna add my yellow in to where I've painted the water. And towards the center, I'm just gonna paint a little bit of orange in there. So we'll add some logs into the inside of our fire in a little bit, the inside of our fireplace, but I'm just gonna let that dry to start. Okay, so while that's drying, we'll finish our logs that are on the left side here. So I'm gonna go in with my brown paint and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some curved lines for the bark kind of on the edges. And then I will do this with pen, but you can give some, some definition to your log shapes and use that same brown just to outline. Okay, so now that I've done that, we're gonna add some logs into our fireplace. So I'm painting essentially wedge, wedge shapes or long, kind of cylinder shapes just into the bottom there. And my fire's not completely dry, so the brown is bleeding into the wood a little bit, but I'm okay with that because often when you look at fire, you'll see that coming through. Anyways, you'll see the brown wood. Okay, so now that that is done, we're gonna go in with our pen, outline some stuff, and then we're gonna go back in and add some more details after. So we're sort of jumping around a little bit more with this tutorial than I normally do or like to when I'm doing tutorials. But when you're painting images that have a lot of aspects to it, just because of how watercolor works, often you have to move around the page quite a bit um, as one layer dries, then you can paint another. So we are going to go in with our pen and outline now just to add some more definition. So I'm gonna start with the outsides of my fireplace. And what I'm doing is I'm adding little ridges, sort of wherever each layer of bricks starts. So you'll be able to see this as well if you're following the drawing guide. But the idea is that it gives it the illusion or effect that it is, it is bricks and it's off, offset from the wall. Okay, 
and then for, I'm just gonna move my paint out of the way a bit, for my mantle at the top here, I'm gonna go straight all the way across. And then I'll bring those lines part way up, but I'll do some outlining for the branches first. So now we're gonna do the inside right around where the fire is. So I'm essentially just outlining what we've already painted. And then we have mantle across the bottom. Okay, so now I'm gonna outline my logs. With my logs, I'm not doing a full outline with my pen. I'm sort of following what I did with the brown paint and doing a little curved line around the outside. And then I'm doing, it kind of looks like a bunch of little pizzas, but they're brown. So that's the idea for the shape for that. I'm gonna give a very loose line across the bottom just to show where the ground is. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna outline my wreath. So I'm drawing all these little leaf shapes and again, for this portion, if you guys look at the drawing guide for reference, then that will sort of give you a hand for what I'm doing. So that's something that you guys could use tracing paper and trace or just look at it as a photo reference. But the leaves, I have them sort of layering, going all the way around in the circle shape. So for this one specifically, I wasn't too concerned with how smooth and even everything was while I was painting because I knew that as I added pen after, it would give it the definition that I want. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for our ones on the side. These leaves, I might do them a bit, some of them a bit longer and skinnier. And then I have a little cluster in the corner here that's facing both directions so you can kind of see where it turns. So again, following the exact same concept as the wreath, we're gonna work our way all the way down. Now I can draw a bit of a line to sort of show where the top of the mantle is. And now we're gonna go into our fireplace. So I'm just gonna do a really loose outline of my fire here. And then the same thing for the logs. Okay. So now that we have that, we're gonna go back in and add some more detail with the paint because right now it's nice, it's standing out more, but the image is still looking a little bit flat. So we're gonna go in and add some more, more detail and texture. So we're gonna start with sort of the mantle, all the pieces that are bordering the fire. We're gonna start with those and I'm gonna go in with my brown paint that I've mixed. And I'm just gonna really add some shading here. So more across the bottom and I'm sort of working it into the whole thing here so I can even re-wet it and then go back in with darker paint across the bottom there just to let it bleed in and work its way work its way in. So right away that stands out so much more. So we're gonna do the exact same thing around the fireplace. So here I'm focusing on adding the darker paint to the edges. And then I can go in with water and just blend it in. 
So I'm just gonna smooth out this one up top here. And then we're gonna continue and do the same thing at the bottom here. So I find that one of my favorite things to do in winter, especially when it's cold, is sit in front of a fireplace and either paint or read or just hang out. So I love painting this because it just gives you that really cozy feeling. All right, so right away you guys should notice how much more of this stands out now that we've added some shading. So I'm just gonna do a tiny bit more along the bottom here. So I started with it really dark, but I can go in with my water and spread it out. And now for my leaves, I wanna make them more full. So I'm gonna go in again with my green and I'm just gonna fill it out. So I'm actually going to paint some green that goes sort of around where I've already drawn out the leaves. And the idea is that I'm just giving it a lot more fullness. So then it looks like a really thick full wintry garland that may have been left over from Christmas or something like that. So now this exact same concept, I'm gonna do that to my wreath. And I'm not going too crazy with it, but I'm just filling it out more. Okay, so now that that is done, typically when you look into a fireplace, it's not white in the background like I have here. So I'm gonna take a mixture of black and brown paint and we're just gonna go in and fill out that part that's in the background. So I'm just working around the fire. I like doing this after I've already outlined the fire just cause it's a little easier to follow the lines that way I find. Going all the way around. I have it a little bit too similar to the outside right now. So I'm gonna go even darker. So I'm gonna take some more black paint and go in more. I don't want it to be completely opaque though. I still wanna keep some of that transparency. So you'll notice that now everything is starting to stand out so much more. With my fire, we're gonna add a little bit more detail to that. So I'm gonna take yellow and a tiny bit of orange. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this brighter color right to the center. And I'm sort of imitating the shape that I used to paint the rest of my fire. But I'm just putting this in the middle. And now the last thing that needs a little bit more detail is the bricks in my painting. So once again, I'll go with my red wood. I'm mixing it with a tiny bit of brown just to tone it down a little bit. And I'm going to sort of outline some of those shapes that I've already painted and just add, add some more texture to it. So for some of these, I'll use a bit of a dry brushing technique. So I'll use my paintbrush until there's not that much water left on it. And for this part specifically, I'm not doing every second brick that I'm doing darker. I'm sort of just scattering throughout. Just to kind of space it out, give it more interest. Have certain ones stand out just a little bit more.
All right, and that is it for our painting details that we're adding. Um, as you guys know, for any of you that have followed along with any of my watercolor and ink tutorials, I love adding some dot details for shading. So we're just gonna do a tiny bit of that and then we will be all done. So what I want to do is using my pen, I'm gonna add some little dots around the center where the fireplace is here. And we're just gonna use that to make it stand out even more. So you'll notice that with these dots that, I, that I'm adding, I'm sort of having them follow where the grooves of the bricks would be. And I'll do some along the bottom. And now I'm gonna do some just along the base of the mantle here. Again, just following that same concept. Now this is a step that you guys can do, you can not follow along with, but you definitely can stop before if you'd like. So we're gonna do some little ones just along the edges here, sort of following where the lines are. And then I'm gonna go on the edge on the bottom here. So this is something that I like to do just to add, add some more interest to my painting. It's something that's very unique and not done all the time, but I find that it's it's really fun because it draws draws the eye around the page more. So we're gonna do a little bit of that around our wreath as well. And then we'll add some to the outside of our fireplace. So I'm sort of focusing having all of them on one side as if that is where more of the shadows are, just cause that's how I was doing it when I was painting. So around the fireplace, I'll stick to having most of them on the left side here. And then I can add a few to my logs here. This can be a good way to kind of give some more definition between each of the logs that's stacked up. Right, and that is all that we have for our cozy fireplace painting. If you guys followed along, make sure to take a picture, send it to me on Instagram at Alexandra Victoria Studio. I absolutely love to see what you guys are painting. And if there's anything else that you wanna learn, whether it's basic techniques or winter tutorials, make sure to leave a comment below. Also, lastly, if you guys haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to this channel. We'll see you next time.